Hey everybody, Lettercast here, and thanks again for joining me on the third episode of Grim Dark Book Club. Today we are going to be reviewing the fourth book in the Horus Heresy series, The Flight of the Eisenstein. And yeah, wow, it is actually my favorite book in the Horus Heresy series, so I'm really excited to get talking about this. Um, I have my script over here to the left, so for those of you watching the video, and you're like, what's going on? Just know that I am just, I am literally just glancing over to make sure I'm covering all the points that I want to cover in this script. So, I actually read The Flight of the Eisenstein toward the middle of last year, 2020, and it has stuck with me. The images from this story have stuck with me ever since. That's why it's my favorite. Um, so, Flight of the Eisenstein was written by James Swallow. I listened to it on Audible, narrated by Jonathan Keeble. And the plotline of this story, and this is a huge spoiler alert, so get ready. The plotline of this story is basically we meet the Death Guard and Mortarion and some of the crucial characters. We get a feel for the culture of the Death Guard, and then Nathaniel Garrow, Carol Sinderman, Euphrates Keeler, Mercedes Olaton, Yakdon Cruz. All of these are names you've heard before in the Horus Heresy series. Um, and a few other loyalists escape the Istvan system by killing any traitors on board of their vessel, the Eisenstein, um, and ejecting them into the void. The rickety old ship jumps into the warp, and the crew has to face a harrowing horde of rotting plague marines and other incarnations of Nurgle. This is kind of where you officially meet Nurgle. You have met him before in this series, when on the moon at Davin, Horus has to kill his former friend who has now been reincarnated by Nurgle. So you've already met Nurgle, but you get to know him pretty intimately in this book. Um, basically, a significant chunk of the story takes place in the warp and is dedicated to just battling warp beasts um, and sort of perverted incarnations of people they had once called friend. So they're basically stranded in the warp until Rogel Dorn and his Imperial Fists rescues them and brings them back to Terra. And then they convince Dorn of Horus's impending or actually kind of current betrayal. Um, and then they hole up in the stronghold of the Sisters of Silence on Luna. One of the crew members who survived the warp with a poison poisonous festering wound succumbs to the injury and transforms into the Lord of the Flies uh, doing significant damage to the fortress and its inhabitants until Garrow finally kills him. And this actually is how the Inquisition is born. And uh, basically what happens is Garrow, Yakdon, Cruz, and one of the Sisters of Silence are brought before Malkador, the Sigilite, to account for their actions. And he's like, let's start the Inquisition. Um, so my one-sentence summation for this is that it is a non-stop action and intrigue centered around characters um, and their development, but also furthering the plot of the Horus Heresy and giving you a better glimpse of the universe. So for those of you who didn't know anything about Warhammer and you just started reading the Horus Heresy, like myself, um, this was a really cool, like, we've already been sort of introduced to the warp, but not really, and this was just furthered that so much. And it also gave a better glimpse into what some of the other legions' cultures look like. So what I really liked was getting to know Mortarion a little bit and the culture of the Death Guard. This book is why I'm so obsessed with the Death Guard, why I fell in love with Mortarion, and why I'm a huge fan of Nurgle. Um, and so obviously we've got, we've got Nurgled up Morty over here, uh, the demon Primarch. Um, so yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about this. Um, so the character commentary I've got here, my favorite character actually in the entire Horus Heresy series is Nathaniel Garrow, I think. Uh, it's him and then uh, Zahariel from uh, Caliban. Uh, those are my two favorite characters in the entire series, I think, so far. But this is where we get to know Garrow and like sort of learn about him as a character. I would characterize him as... I mean, he's a loyalist, he's not lawful good, he's probably closer to neutral good, I would say. Um, I didn't have a least favorite character in the story, actually, at all. My thoughts on the 
like people involved. I really loved meeting the Death Guard. Um, and like I said earlier, this book is when I fell in love with Mortarion and Nurgle. Part of that actually had to do with the way that the narrator uh, spoke Mortarion's lines. Uh, so Jonathan Keeble did just an excellent job throughout all of it. Thoughts on character development? I really appreciated seeing the psychological effects of the warp on the crew. I And I loved sort of getting to be a little bit more intimate with the characters in their fears, in their desires, in their experience in the warp. Um, and it was written in such a way that it was really hard to tell. Uh, the amount of time that passed while they were in the warp, which was freaking peak writing right there. Additionally, I really liked watching Garo become even more of a badass, and I liked that the group of Cinderman, Keeler, and Olten grew closer together, um, and their places in the story became more solidified. Um, they were already pretty big in the second and third books, but having a fourth book that focused almost solely, I would say, a, a third if not half of the book was focused on them, and I really liked that. The length was good, the chapters were manageable, um, in terms of plot commentary, my favorite part was obviously um, just any type of warp experience was good. Um, watching them fight the warp beasts, but also Garrow's battle with the Lord of the Flies was like freaking peak writing right there. Like I still, like I said, I still have the images of this story in my brain because of how well it was written and how well it was read. It's my favorite Horus Heresy book so far. I just finished uh, A Thousand Suns. I kind of lagged. It took me about a month, a uh, month and a half to read that book. So I'm a little bit behind in terms of like where I'm supposed to be in the Horus Heresy, but this one and Descent of Angels are pretty much a, a close tie uh, for in terms of favorites for me. If all of the Horus Heresy books were like this, I think I'd be completely done with the whole series already. Really what I appreciated about the book as a whole is all of the battle and like the spooky-esque scenes are just so well written, the imagery is vivid, the description is not too much, not too little, and the character development is on point. Um, it was excellently paced, there's nothing that was too slow or too quick, um, and really I just loved it like through and through. I would absolutely read the book and the author again, I plan to read all of Swallow's work that I can get my hands on. I know that he's written for Star Trek and a few other uh, larger franchises, so I really look forward to reading that, as well as rereading Flight of the Eisenstein. Um, the book was super immersive. I could not put it down. Um, it was really easy to listen to. I didn't read the paper uh, book itself, so I can't say for sure, but I think it would have been uh, a pretty easy read. And, uh, you know, in terms of narration, Jonathan Keeble on Audible did an excellent job. And I would absolutely recommend this book, but only, <laughs> the caveat here, only if you actually really like grimdark content, um, and if you're not squeamish, because Nurgle can be pretty gross. Like I mentioned, the description was pretty vivid. I like gory stuff. I like gross um, stuff that kind of makes the hair on the back of my neck and on my back kind of like prickle up. So um, if that's a thing that you like, then absolutely go for it. Read this book. It's really, really good. Um, and that's really it. Um, if you liked what you saw or heard today, be sure to hit the button, subscribe. You know, if you enjoyed my review and you enjoy grimdark content, you might actually enjoy my writing too, so I actually officially have stuff on Amazon Bella now. I will be releasing a new episode of Old Ladies of the Apocalypse every month to the Amazon Kindle Vella, which is a new program they have where you're able to read short episodes of a story and then uh, vote on it and like different little things like that, and I get paid for every time that you read it. And um, if you'd like, I'll go ahead and tell you the little descriptor of, like, the summary, if you will, or the teaser, if you will. So Old Ladies of the Apocalypse is characterized as a science fiction and action adventure story. Um, some of the tags are zombies, elderly heroines, quirky, apocalypse, humorous horror, fantasy, comedy, science fiction, and science fiction comedy. And uh, the description is this. Mavis and June are hardly best friends. In fact, they practically consider each other enemies. 
But when the world comes to a complete halt and their routines are disturbed by zombies and annoying teens, they team up to save the world. Mavis and June are here to prove you don't have to be young to be a badass, and sometimes a hero's best weapons are her knitting needles. So yeah, it's kind of quirky, and uh, it's a story idea that I actually came up with with one of my best friends, Kit Branish, uh, a couple of years back, probably around 2016, and uh, it was something we started writing together, but he went ahead and said, you know what, I've got too much on my plate, you go ahead and go for it, and I have been, I've been going for it, I hope you guys read it, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I am still continuing production on Arachnopocalypse. It took a little bit of a back seat here uh, this week with my eye being all weird and me trying to figure out like doctor's appointment things. But yeah, so thank you again for joining me uh, on this episode of Grim Dark Book Club, and I look forward to seeing you again next month. Remember, I usually upload an episode of this particular podcast on the second Friday of every month. So yeah, thanks again, and have a wonderful day.